Come on in, everyone. Come on in because we are finally here for Married at First Sight, season 17, the finale. And my name, my name is Deborah, and we're finally here, y'all. It has taken us, I don't know how many, 23 episodes, 24 episodes to finally get here. I miss y'all. I missed y'all the last, what, week or so. We didn't do a recap. I wasn't going to do no recap on that stuff, not at all. And the break did me good. The break did me good because here I am back saying, okay, let's see what this finale is going to be about. And the finale came on, y'all, and all the ladies had on pink. <laughs> Once again, except for purple, purple Chloe, Chloe in the purple. And the men all had on, they weren't all dressed alike, but they were all dressed like they was going to a funeral. <laughs> a funeral, maybe it's the death of these marriages, finally. Maybe it's the death of these marriages, except for Cameron, when Cameron tried to lie to us one more time and say he really wanted to be with Claire. But we are going to talk about this, too. But one thing we did get, y'all, we got the confessions. We got the confessions that it was all a lie by everyone. And then if any of you guys watch my channel, you know I got a phrase that says, you got got. You got got, which means you went in. You went into the situation trying to finagle and somehow cheat and scheme and you were thinking you was going to get the best of someone else and that someone else was going to be us audience and in the end you got got and that's what happened to these ladies. These ladies went in with this scheme and in the end they got got and once they started to realize they got got they started calling foul. Like I said Liars amongst liars, thieves amongst thieves. All is fair and game. That's what I say. Once you start lying, once you get into the bed of liar, yeah, we can sit here and talk about who's the biggest liar, who's the worst liar, but you a liar too. So there's no amount of tears from Emily, no amount of tears from Claire, no amount of tears from Lauren, no amount of tears from Becca that I will care about because in the end, you agreed to this. You agreed to this, you went along with it and you came up with some ridiculous excuses of why you went along with it. Listen to this y'all, this is the excuse. The reason why we went along with the men, let me back up. All the men didn't wanna be with us. This is what they say. All these men really didn't wanna be with us and we figured it out. But the reason why we went along with them is because we wanted to save our marriages. Hold up. Wait a minute. So men conspired, as you say. In fact, y'all, this is what actually made it worse. What made it worse was that they had, they had strategy sessions. Did you hear that from Becca? They actually had strategy sessions. I'll say this. I got a lot of this season right. I called it from the beginning that these men were lying. I said they were lying from the beginning. They didn't like these wives. And that they were playing HR. Everybody remembers my HR videos. They were in HR. We come to find out that's exactly the case. But let me tell you the part I got wrong. Which I didn't even think about. Was that all these strategy sessions of the men. To come up with these ideas on how they were going to play this season. How they were going to play the audience. How they were going to play um, the producers. And how they were going to try to control the narrative of the story. I did not think that these strategies were done with the women there in the same room. I did not think that. I didn't guess that. So that actually made it worse for me. The fact that I already knew the men had strategy sessions that they got together. I already knew that it was Orion. When everybody was mad at me about Orion, I already knew that it was Orion that decided to do something a little bit differently. He was the one that said no. And he was the one that said no. And he was the one that decided to try to do it on his own a different kind of way. And he looked bad. He looked really bad. He looked bad at first. But now that you look at everyone, they all look bad. Everyone looks bad. The men look bad. The women look bad. But I had never guessed that the women were in on the strategy sessions. When I was talking about Lauren and Orion in the beginning being fake, these fake conversations, they talk so much. It's a lot of talk to look good, but they don't mean anything they say. Remember I was talking about all the fake wokeness? This all makes more sense now because these were strategy sessions. These, this was almost like a play, a theatrical play where you have lines, I have lines. 
So when I was going back and forth with Cameron and Claire said, I can't tell who's lying the most. Is it Claire? Is it Cameron? That was really going on because the part I had always been missing was I had no idea that the women were in on a strategy session and they too had been given lines. But along the way, some things went wrong. Along the way, the ladies started having regrets about what they did. The ladies, I believe, started not necessarily wanting to go along with this. They keep saying they were naive and they manipulated. No, they weren't. They weren't naive and they weren't manipulated. And I'm going to tell you who I think is the biggest liar. And I'm going to start dissecting these lies. I mean, like I said, I already knew they were lying. I just didn't know the women were in the strategy sessions with the men. If you guys remember, one of the things I said about why I felt Claire was the biggest liar is because I felt like Claire was not only lying to lying to us with the men, that she was also lying to the women, that she was something like a double agent. And I still believe that. I believe, like I said, that none of these men liked their wives from the very beginning. From the very beginning. But here's the difference between Claire and Cameron. So I don't think the men liked the wives, but I think the women liked their men, except for Claire. You see, Claire was on the outside. The men didn't like the women, but the women did like the men, except for Claire. Claire didn't like Cameron. I believe from the very beginning, Claire did not like Cameron. And I don't think it was because of the looks. I think there was a lot of emphasis on him talking about what he asked for. I actually believe Claire. I actually believe Claire that Cameron said those things. I do. I told you guys from the very beginning that a man that lives in the basement with the spiders, there's a part about him that I don't trust. And I believe Cameron's been lying all season as well. I do. But I believe the difference between Claire and Cameron is that Cameron had a different situation on his hand because his wife didn't like him either. Now it was going to just be a matter of them both looking good. And what I believe happened was Claire didn't like Cameron, not necessarily because of his looks. I think she didn't like him because of his profession. I will go back to it. I do not believe that Claire liked the fact that Cameron was a loner, that Cameron really didn't have any friends or family, and that Cameron was a bike shop owner. I know a lot of people got down in my comments talking about how much money you make as a bike shop owner and this and that. I was like, I don't think that's, I don't think that's what Cameron's doing. And I think I got further confirmation this week that he wasn't making no money because when he got on here, he started talking about how happy he is and how maybe this process was a blessing to him. And now he's in finance. You done gone from fixing bikes to finance. That tells me you went on to greener pastures, which means to me, I don't think that bike shop was so green. I don't. I think that Claire rejected Cameron very, very early on for a variety of reasons. And I think the, I think it was his dress style because we saw that on the honeymoon. I don't think that she liked the fact about his um, family, no family. His friendships were rocky. He lived in a basement apartment with some spiders. He was a bike shop owner and didn't have the type of profession she would want. I believe all this. And what I know about Claire, she's very judgmental. She's very negative Nancy. And I think she said all those things to him on pretty much on the first or second date. I believe it. I believe it. Because we saw plenty of videos in the wedding where even her sisters were saying things. So I believe it. And I believe from there on out, Cameron said, fine. You think I'm not good enough for you? That's what I think happened. You think I'm not good enough for you? Well, you're not good enough for me. And what Cameron started going to on Claire was her looks. I believe he did say, I want a, a tall, slender European woman. And this stuff, he's talking about her flat little booty. <laughs> Woo! I believe all that went on. But here's, here's the part. I think it was sparked. I think it was sparked by Claire. I think the first rejection came from Claire. But the problem then became is now when you have these strategy sessions and Claire is in the strategy session with the women along with the men and they're in this group and they're trying to devise a way to look good. I believe Claire 
uses a whole lot of manipulation tactics to also pull the women along. If you notice, anytime someone in the group, one of the ladies wants to start talking, Claire sort of touches the lady. That she sort of holds her hand. She sort of puts her arm on the ladies. These ladies keep saying they were controlled by the men, but where they're not re- who they're really not looking at is the real handler of the women, and the real handler is Claire. Claire, because Claire didn't like Cameron, Claire had to one make the women believe she was part of their group, that she was one of the women, one of the women being shunned by the husband when it really wasn't the truth. Okay? And she had to make them believe that though. And she also had to make them go along with the whole plan because the whole plan is as they say, we all want to look good. We all don't want to look bad. The problem with them all is they're a little bit dense. They're a little bit naive. They really believed that they were going to fool us all. They didn't fool me. And in fact, not only did they fool, not fool me to make me believe their stories, it made them look worse. So imagine you start off in the beginning of a season hatching a plan to make yourself look good in front of millions of people of America and all these things. But in the end, you end up looking like one of the worst casts in Married at First Sight history. And let me tell you, that's a tall, that's, that's hard to do because we've had some bad characters on Married at First Sight in the history of Married at First Sight. So the fact that this entire cast Forget about the worst husbands or the worst wives. We done created a whole new category. And the new category is the entire worst cast. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's not one person, not a one on this cast that I even like. There's not a one person on this cast that if they started crying like they were doing on the show, that I would give a damn. I don't care because you all are liars. And the fact that now you've come here and you have decided to confess, big deal. We've already figured it out. We already know what's going on. It's like that driver. You ever be driving behind somebody and all of a sudden they start putting on their brakes? It's a road and you're like, why are they putting on their brakes? Why are they stopping? Why are they slowing down? And then you figure out in your head, oh, they must be about to make a right turn even though they didn't signal, even though they didn't tell you. And then all of a sudden they get into the middle of the turn and they put on their blinker boy we already know <laughs> you'd be like wow you signal now after you in the middle of the turn no you post a signal before you even start breaking that's the rules of the road these people decided to confess after the 25th episode at the end confessing about something that we already knew we already you already look bad we've already seen the signs we've already figured it out so the fact that you've decided to tell us now and now you want us to have a level of sympathy and empathy for you ladies in your pink solidarity because the men did you wrong they manipulated you we don't care we do not give a damn you spent the entire season manipulating us lying to us now we know why they couldn't talk they keep saying we couldn't spill the secret because we were protecting the husbands what when the men said they were protecting you, that's why they weren't letting your stuff out. You said, we don't need your protection. That's bull crap. Now you get on here and you say you were protecting the men. You were protecting the marriage. No, you weren't. You were protecting yourself because let me tell you something. In order to report a crime in which you were there, you got to say you were there. You see, how can you go and start talking about a pact that the men have when you were part of the pact? How you, can you be a snitch when you're one of the thieves? See, this is why all these women were rendered silent. They want to say they were rendered silent because they were manipulated and they were controlled. No, you weren't. You were controlled by your own lies. You couldn't tell on the men because if you told on the men, you'd be telling on yourself. You were keeping your lies. You were keeping your secrets. And now you want to cry and make us feel sorry for you? Absolutely not. I have no sympathy, no empathy for none of these women on this show. And they have all made themselves look really, really horrible. That was a long intro. I haven't even really gotten into the parts of the, um, into my notes from the actual episode. I just sat there for whole, whatever, how long that was, a ranting. But let me start referring to some of my notes because everybody had on pink. Solidarity, we're going to stick together just like we stuck together all season long with this lie. 
we figured that out too we kept saying what's all the pink about in the after party it's about solidarity that was what it was about we had a lot of speculation but that's the one i landed on and looks like we bet right we bet on pink and the pink was for solidarity but here's the rub they talked about solidarity women's empowerment being strong and let me tell you all that stuff uh what's her name emily was talking about hashtag women support women no we don't i don't support liars emily I don't care what's between your legs, whether you got a vagina or whether you got a penis. I don't support liars, period. Gender does not top morality for me. If you're a liar, you're a liar. I don't care if you're a male or you're female. That is not my overarching rule in which I use whether or not I'm a stick by a person. And let me tell you something. Ugh, these women, they got it all wrong. These women got life. When I say they got it all wrong, they not only have this television show, this series wrong, they got life wrong. They got life wrong, including the men. So anyway, let's go through this. Chloe had on her purple. She said, you know what? I'm not wearing no pink because I'm not with these ladies. And I'm going to tell you this about Michael. I think I was wrong about Michael, y'all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out and I'm going to say it. Um, when I look at Michael on this season two, and I look at the reason he's given for not, for not marrying Chloe, it's very flimsy. It's very flimsy. I don't... These people can talk around a rose bush. They cannot answer a freaking question. It just drives me crazy. And I too wanted to hear, what was the reason, Michael, you didn't want to marry Chloe? Tell us, is it about the goats? Is it about the farm? Is it about f being a foster parent? Tell us, give us something we can hold on to, something we can wrap our brains around. But you know what? In the end, he didn't give us anything. He really didn't give us anything, which also, almost makes me think, did Michael get inducted? into this whole charade because you know they had these strategy sessions these men were talking behind closed doors open and freely was there a moment in time when me when um michael was a part of some of these discussions with the men sure maybe in the beginning he didn't have a bride but once he got one and he got a chance to see whether or not he liked her or not did he then just say i'm gonna go with the plan of the men i'm gonna pretend and make it and fake it to the end and i believe he did I believe he too, that when he met all the women, or when he met all the men, the men told Michael of the plan. The men told Michael what we've been doing here while you've been not on the show and not filming with us. This is our plan. Michael didn't have a bride at the time. I believe Michael, once he got a bride, he kept that little plan in his back pocket. If it worked out, I'd, if it worked out, I wouldn't need the man's plan. But if it didn't work out, I'm going to use y'all's plan. And I think very early on, Michael also decided that he did not want to be with Chloe and he used the man's plan. And we've been saying all season long that we thought Chloe was faking it too. But the fact that Chloe doesn't wear pink, the fact that Chloe isn't part of this group, the fact that the women had their own dressing room, twerking, um, doing shots, you know, saying Emily running around talking about she's a 10. <laughs> Emily's a 10 and everybody else is a zero, a one or a two. The fact that Chloe was sitting in her own um, dressing room kind of tells me she wasn't with the ladies. A lot of people said they thought Chloe was an actress. <laughs> she might have had her own dressing booth. That, booth. that might have been in her own um, contract too. I don't know. I haven't really figured that part out. But I now kind of believe that, that Michael early on didn't want to be with Chloe. And I'm starting to believe what she said, that it happened sooner than the goats and the kids. But I also believe that Chloe figured it out. And do I believe that she also used the, the goats and the pigs and the five children to shoo him away even more? Yeah, I do. I do. I think Chloe in the end had her own plan. I think, you know what? I think this man doesn't want me, okay, because of the things that he's been saying or doing. She kind of lied. She laid out a little bit of it in the end saying, you know what, he, you know, about the last name, even though that last name thing, I kind of believe Michael a little bit more that he didn't really say it in that way, that the way that he really did say it probably was you can hyphenate it. Cause I do think Michael was progressive. I think that he would say, you don't have to change your last name. I'm okay with that. You can hyphenate it or you can keep your maiden name. I believe that was the full answer. So I don't believe Chloe in the way that she presented the answer. I actually believe Michael. Okay. Um, I believe him in that instance. Uh, when she was saying, I was hoping that he would ask me to stay in the apartment when I said I wanted to leave. I don't necessarily believe that. I don't. I don't believe that because Chloe is pretty direct. 
So you're trying to tell me in all the other instances, Chloe, you're this grand communicator. You communicate so well. But then in this moment, you want to say you didn't speak your mind and didn't say anything because you wanted Michael to say it. I don't believe that. I don't at all. So what I believe is that two things. One is I think that Michael eventually did not like Chloe either. I also don't think that Chloe liked Michael from the very beginning as well. I do believe that. And I believe they both decided to go out on their own and try to come out of this looking well. I do. We don't hear Michael say anything about why he doesn't want to be with Chloe. He's not going to reveal his real truth. Okay. And then Chloe, I think she did hatch that plan with the ghosts and the, and the um, foster children to make sure the nail is in the coffin. He'll say no to her. So that way in the end, she doesn't, she looks better. She doesn't look like she's saying no to him. He's saying no her to her, but I don't think she really wanted him. No, in the end, a lot of these people decided very early on, they didn't like their mates and the way that they were going to get out of these marriages, they took different paths. You had the path of the three other men, which are, uh, no, you had the path of Orion. Orion said, I'm not going along with this. I'm going to say it up front in the beginning. I'm going to get the hell out. Okay. His was more abrupt. You had um, Brennan and you had Cameron. You had Brennan who decided to go along with his lie to look good. You had Cameron who also had another level of involvement because he was married to the chief manipulator who was um, Claire. And I believe the two of them, that's why their plan is the most elaborate. Because of the two, I think they were the most thinking people. They're the ones that really spent a lot of time thinking about what we're going to do and how we're really going to manipulate. They were the thinkers. You got Cameron, the engineer, who's a thinker, the logical, sorting it all out. And you got Claire, who's a really manipulative pe person by nature. And I think their two minds together is what caused all these twists and turns. And I think in a lot of ways, Claire and Cameron were the two leaders of the manipulation amongst all the groups. I do. I do. I think those two together are a horrible, horrible couple, and they could be dangerous out here in the world together. Because the way they two think, between the way Cameron thinks and the way Claire thinks, they both are manipulative. They're both are manipulative and they're both are liars. But I do believe that one of the real reasons why Claire didn't like Cameron was because of his profession, and I think he knew it. Because one of the reasons I think Cameron came back and started saying, hey, maybe there's a chance with me and Claire is because I think Claire did reject him first. And I think he knew why. I think he knew it wasn't all over his looks. I think he knew it was over, over his profession. And I think that judgment from Claire, the judgment from Claire on Cameron about his profession and what he was doing actually made him go out and change his job. I do. I believe it. I think that I think it was an incentive for Cameron to say, I better get my stuff together because what I'm doing over here, servicing these bikes is not making the kind of money I would need to be married. And that even though Claire was harsh, even though she was judgmental, there was truth to it because Cameron was over here repairing bikes, living in a basement apartment with spiders. And he thought a wife would want that life. And, and Claire in her judgment and her, in her sharpness said, hell to the no and that made Cameron get it together see do we even believe that Cameron has been under the weather and hospitalized this whole time with his heart surgery I don't believe so y'all I believe that became another lie another excuse Cameron has told a lot of lies did he have heart surgery sure he probably did but was it a procedure that required this much running away from the whole uh, situation no but in the end, I don't think Claire should have been here either. She should have left too. So I don't care that he left, but the lie becomes why you left. He used the medical reason as the reason to leave as his excuse. Because you see, he can still, you know what? Hey, producers, it's not me. It's my heart condition. I don't believe it. Uh, I don't believe Cameron and I don't believe Claire but like I said the biggest female lie I'm going to give the award to Claire because I think she was the chief initial manipulator of everything and I'm still going to give the chief lying award to Austin you know why I'm going to give it to Austin I know a lot of people want to give it to Brennan because he's told a lot of lies too but nope I'm going to give it to Austin because the thing about Austin is Austin is lying about a whole whole lot and here even on this confessional reunion Think about Austin's ending place. Okay, Austin, 
You're saying you weren't part of this strategy session to lie. He says, no, I was part of the session just to make myself and Becca look good. But I really want to be married to Becca. I really want to love on Becca. I really want, I wanted all of these things. I was attracted to her. Got it. So you want us to believe, Austin, that the only reason you didn't have sex with Becca was because you have a rule, a pattern, that you don't want to have intimacy with any of your partners until three to six months. That's what you want us to believe, Becca. Um, that's what you want us to believe, Austin. That none of this that went on this season had to do with Becca herself. Because that's what Austin is trying to tell us. None of it had to do with Becca. It all had to do with his rules. He hasn't said anything about any part of Becca that turned him off. He wasn't interested in. No, I wanted to be with Becca. I love Becca. The only thing is I don't want to have sex for three to six months. And because she pressured me, that's what made me irritated. Okay. So you came on married at first sight, marrying a person at first sight, knowing it's an eight week process and you have these rules that you know about that you have these rules. And the rules that you have, Austin, are you don't like to have sex until three to six months. So we got an eight-week show, an eight-week marriage, which is two months. And you're telling me that at best, at best, you weren't going to sleep with your wife until three months. Three months. That would be a whole month after decision day. So your wife would have to marry you at the altar, get married, fall in love with you, have no sex for eight weeks, say yes on decision day, and then wait another whole month for you to consummate a marriage. And according to you, Austin, that's the best it might get because three months is your lower limit. Your upper limit is six. Your upper limit is six. So Austin is telling us, that no, it has nothing to do with Becca. This is just how I operate out here. This is just my world. Like I tell you guys, I'm going to keep him as the biggest liar because like I told you before, Austin hasn't revealed the biggest lie he really wants to reveal. He hasn't revealed it. Just like I told you guys, he wasn't interested in that producer. He wasn't interested in that producer. Austin likes to be best friends with women. Does it sound familiar? Austin likes women to be best friends with them, to be friends with them. Just like he said, I sure would like to still be friends with Becca. Of course you do, because that's where you like to put most women in the friendship role. And did you see him when he said, oh, is anybody still talking to each other? The lady said, yeah, we talk every single day. We got our group chat all the time. The men, they said, men, are you guys talking to each other? And Orion started lying, talking about, yeah, we talk. And the men were like, no, we don't talk. But then there you go with Austin who reaches over and grabs the hand of Michael and pats his leg and say, this guy though, I do. I talk to Michael. I talk to him all the time. And he pats Michael on the leg. Get out of here, Austin. Get out of here. I'm not believing it. Austin is the biggest liar of this whole season when it comes to the men. And he's lying more about whether or not he's attracted to Becca. He's lying about whether he's attracted to women, period. He's attracted to more than women. More than women, if women at all, to be honest with you. Get out of here that you came on a show. Austin came on this show to figure out his sexuality. Let's be real about it. He's giving it one more try to figure out, maybe I can make it work with a woman. Maybe if I just get married to a woman, maybe the feelings will come. That's what he's saying. Ordinarily out here in the world, the feelings for me, even wanting to be able to not to throw up and sleeping with a woman, it takes me three to six months. But I'm going to go ahead and get married because I'm going to see if maybe if I'm married to the woman, I'll have feelings for her. Because see, Austin is running around thinking the reason why he hasn't liked a woman because he hasn't found anyone he's compatible with. 
Oh, I can't find anyone. That's why I'm not attracted to her in that way because she's not compatible with me. So it's not me. It's not my attraction to other people other than women. It's the women. It's because they're not what I want. If I just find the woman, then I'll be attracted to women. Let me go on married at first sight and let me get matched by matchmakers. And they're going to match me with the woman. And that woman is going to have everything I need and I want and I'm going to like. And that's going to want to make me have the sexual feelings for that woman woman that's what he's looking for he's looking for the sexual feelings and he was hoping that on married at first sight they would match him with someone that would give him those sexual feelings and then he gets back and he realizes dang i still don't have no sexual feelings but maybe i'll have it in three to six months get the hell out of here austin get off my screen get off my screen when you look at all these shenanigans all these stories they're telling Brennan deleting, um, Brennan deleting messages. I don't care anymore because you were part of the original plan, Emily. Who cares anymore that Brennan was deleting stories? Well, of course he would be deleting stories because you all had an agreement. See, that changes Emily's whole narrative. He was Emily's whole narrative is that Brennan was trying to hide things, be one person off camera, be one person on camera. But what she was leaving out was she was doing the same thing. She was kissing Australians. She was, she agreed to the original plan. It changes the story when you're telling us what Brennan was doing when you agreed to the story in the very beginning. That's the problem. You're no longer a victim. You're no longer a victim of Brennan. What you are is you're a person who went into the business, the dirty business with Brennan, and then in the middle of the business agreement, you didn't like the agreement anymore. You wanted to change the terms of the agreement, and Brennan said, no, we're not changing the terms of the agreement. This is the agreement. This is it. This is the agreement, and you got upset, and you got angry, and you got mad, and maybe you caught some feelings from Brennan. That's what it sounds like. Brennan didn't want to be with Emily in the beginning. The minute Brennan saw Emily getting drunk at that wedding, the minute he got a whiff of Emily's nasty attitude, okay, her mean attitude, the way that she approaches conversations, the approach, the way she approaches things, Brennan didn't like it. Brennan has a very strong demeanor. He has a very strong demeanor. A lot of the things that we thought about Brennan are true. Very strong, very controlling, all of that. How the hell could Brennan with a strong, controlling personality like that ever be with Emily when Emily doesn't listen to anyone? Emily doesn't ex respect anyone. She doesn't respect any of the hosts on the show. We see she's going to start yelling and screaming at that man later on. Emily only respects you when you agree with her. But the minute you disagree with her, the minute you have a different opinion than her, the minute you want you say something different to her, she's going to talk back to you. She's going to talk nasty to you. She's going to talk bad with you. And there was no way that that combination between Emily, who likes to run her mouth, and Brennan, who likes to control and who is very stern, was ever going to get along. They really didn't need to have no pact. To look good because nobody looked good this season they all looked horrible absolutely horrible did cameron tell um uh, claire that, that he didn't think that she was attractive and let me start talking about her physically i believe he did you know why because cameron is petty and he's nasty he got on some get back with claire i think claire rejected cameron from the very 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 beginning very beginning over his profession over his money over his lifestyle things he does the way he moves and shakes i believe that she judged him and let me tell you one of the ways in which a man gets back at a woman once you've shunned him is you talk about her looks and that's what cameron did cameron started picking on her looks and did he really believe it no he didn't really believe it i think he really does believe that claire is attractive and all those kind of things but i think what he did was he used that to dig at her because he felt like she digged at him that's what i i think it was some petty get back because one thing you see about cameron he's petty he's real petty and that's what claire was not used to claire the reason why she's sitting there doing this all the time is because what claire is used to is she's used to being the queen manipulator out here in the streets She's used to getting over on most people. She's just like she got over on these women. This is how Claire operates in the world. She's the more crafty one. You put her out in the world, nine out of 10 times, Claire's manipulating most people. But when she got paired with Cameron, she was in over her head. She didn't realize that she got married to a man who was just as crafty, who was just as petty, and who had just as much manipulation skill as she did. And she 
was flabbergasted by it. So when Cameron say Claire said I should come up with a plan, I believe it. I believe it's what happened. Because what I believe is Claire from the very beginning didn't want Cameron. And she said, yeah, we should all still look good. Claire tried to say, listen, you don't like me. I don't like you. Let's come up with something. What are your ideas? I believe it all. But Cameron's lying and saying he had to go along with it. Claire, Cameron, stop lying. Stop lying. You had to go along with it because at that point in time, you knew Claire didn't want you. If that's what you're talking about, that's fine. But you didn't have to go along with it. No one had to go along with it. I am not for this. I had to go along with something or else. Or else what? Or else you will be exposed from having been there in the first place. Having lied in the first place. And when Lauren says that Orion said the only reason he came on the show was to highlight indigenous people. Do I believe that whole story? No. But I think it became one of the reasons that was painfully obvious. It was painfully obvious that at the very beginning, two people decided they were going to become the representatives of an entire race. Just like when Lauren got on here, she decided she was going to be a representative of the black race, African-Americans, black people, whatever you want to call it, African-American women. Just like she decided she was going to be on here and start talking about hair bonnets and all these other kind of things. No, you weren't my representative. And Orion wasn't the re representative of Native Americans either. They both designated themselves this. So when Lauren says, oh, Orion only wanted to come over here and represent well. Well, Lauren was doing the same damn thing. Just like we said, liars. That's their game plan. They decided that even though we don't like each other, what we're going to do is we're going to represent our individual um, um, communities, culture individually, and they spent their whole time trying to give us a doggone history lesson, and half the history was wrong. Wrong. No, they designated it and appointed themselves that. Nobody asked for that from Lauren. I didn't ask Lauren to represent me on mass as an African American woman. Nobody asked uh, uh, Orion to represent them as a Native American indigenous person. No, no one asked that. Y'all appointed yourself that. That was part of your story, your script. This is what I'm saying. These people, they sit up here and craft these stories. They craft these lines. They craft these narratives. And then when the narratives go wrong, they blame other people and say, this is why it went wrong. No, y'all was the orchestrators of this. And everybody saw through it. Everybody saw through Lauren, her fake wokeness, teaching about hair bonnets. And what else was she teaching about with black people? It was just ridiculous. Why is she talking about this? And now she wants to come over here and start talking about what Orion was doing. Yeah, Orion was doing the same thing. Talking about all his traditions and hair. It was over the top. We knew it was over the top. We didn't understand why are we talking about this so early in the marriage. Because it was their story. It is what they both wanted to do. Once they realized that they didn't like each other. This now became their storyline. And we all saw it. And guess what? We saw it and we didn't like it. And Becca trying to make me believe that she went along with this whole thing with Austin just because she was believing Austin. I don't believe that either. Becca can sit there all day long and say, I was believing Austin. I was believing Austin. You just said that on and off camera, he was two completely p different people. He was darn near yelling and screaming at you and being a nasty old troll off camera. And somehow you want us to believe that you're just so naive. All these strong, independent women that they say they are, but all of a sudden now they're shrinking behind men that they don't even love, they don't care about, they don't know. Get out of here, ladies. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Now all of a sudden they all run around talking about they were here to protect the marriage. When the men said they were here to protect you, you call it all lies. Now Emily is on here saying, well, we protected the marriage. Girl, get out of here. You won't protect anyone but yourselves. The very thing they're accusing the men of is the same thing that they did as well. But let me tell you something. When Emily started dropping at the end of the episode that Brennan was trying to talk not only to, to Claire's friend, but Brennan was also trying to talk to her best friend. That tells you something. Wait a minute, Emily. Wait a minute. How can you be tricked then if you're telling me your best friend Brennan was trying to talk to? That means even your best friend knew it was up. Even your best friend knew what was going on because how the world can she be a best friend if you're just telling me she was entertaining even talking to Brennan? How does Brennan even have the position to be able to call your best friend? How does Brennan even have to be in the position to even call Claire's friend? That is because you guys were all in cahoots and everyone knew this was a ruse. Everyone knew this was a scam. 
probably believe the entire city of Denver, maybe even the entire state of Colorado, knew this was a scam and knew this was all a lie and that you guys were all acting the lie. You really made a fool out of the entire Married at First Sight television show. You really did. Married at First Sight should snatch all your checks, period. All of them. Because the fact that your best friend was talking to Brennan tells me your best friend even knew that your marriage was a sham and she only could have known it was a sham through you because you didn't even leave Brennan after he was talking to your best friend. You didn't even care that Brennan was talking to Claire's best friend. You want to sit over here and say it's all about Brennan talking to these ladies, but there's no problem with Claire sitting around and allowing it from her best friend. There's no problem with you allowing it of your best friend, but it's all on Brennan. Like I said, this was an all in agreement and what the ladies decided to do halfway or some part, not even halfway through the season, they decided that they didn't want to go along with the plan anymore, but it was too late. It was too late. They had already committed the crime because once they committed the crime with the men and they sat around and drafted this plan and they went along with it, the men said, let's keep it going. Let's keep robbing more banks. And the women were like, no, we don't want to rob no more banks. We want to stop. We just want to do one bank and that's it. The man said, no, you got to keep robbing these banks because if you don't keep robbing these banks, I'm going to expose you for the first bank robbery and you're going to go to jail for a long time for that one. And then the ladies started getting me. They started feeling blackmailed. They started feeling manipulated. Too bad. That's what happens. You lay down with thieves. You lay. What's the old saying? You lay down with dogs. You get fleas. There you go, ladies. You lay down with dogs. You get fleas. And the could, story could be told that you're all dogs. There were, <laughs> you're all dogs, really. You're all dogs. But anyway, that's it, y'all. We will be next back next week for part two. Part two of the confession, part two of the lies. Let's see how much more deeper could these lies go? Because that's all we're going to now is how deep do the lies go? Uh, we already know everybody's a liar. So that part is settled and done. Talk to y'all next week. Bye. <laughs>